right, guys, welcome to this week's Generation Nine podcast. Your host, me, Victor Martinez, along with Esan Farahi, Vlad Yudin, and Edwin Mejia. Welcome. Welcome back. We're all here. Yes. Another one. Great week, right? Everybody having Great a good time? Great week, nice weather. And uh, ready for summer, man. <laughs> well, summer, I'm always ready for summer. <laughs> My daughter got me this shirt. It was yeah, beautiful. She hooked me, up. She hooked me up. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go right into the question. We have two questions of the day today. You excited, Vic? Yes. What are the questions? Any, uh, I don't know, any haters? Come on. No this, haters this no week. Haters. Um, um, but man, we do have two good questions. And, uh, <laughs> it's not good. Man. Ever since, uh, you know, we answered the sleep stack, that question that we got, I think we we're getting some more questions in and it's actually very exciting All to right, see those good, questions. Good, good. So the question of the week comes from, uh, from the first question. It comes from Michelle Cook Hill. And that question is, what has creatine done for your cognitive abilities? It's a Great woman. question. Michelle is a woman, right? I'm assuming. Yeah. I have no I hope she is. Or it should be. Could be a friend. Right these days, man, would we'll take a uh, Michelle. I know, man. <laughs> it's funny. I was watching the, a, a, a famous podcast just, just earlier today, and they were talking about how creatine is, is not good for muscle, but also for, for brain, supposedly. Yes. I don't know for sure. Yes, so, it is. You go ahead. Answer that question. No, no, no. It's actually very good for brain uh, functions. Uh, Alzheimer. Yeah, yeah. It's perfect for Alzheimer. It yeah. does. I think in studies they found it actually helps benefit cognitive issues and, you know, um, brain functions and, you know, obviously energy, mm -hmm. you know. So a lot of the times, uh, and focus supposed to help as well. I mean, when creatine first came out, started using it in the, you know, a long time ago. <laughs> when, the, when, the, when the first time you're using creatine? Man. Which year was it? 1990? Yeah, yeah, a thousand years ago. No. <laughs> 1990? But, uh, no, but it was great. I remember it just obviously for the faster, you know, results were the mm -hmm. muscle pump and strength. But it was, uh, you know, you just felt the focus, you know? So you felt, you felt focus actually. Yeah, yeah. So I think they should, I think that's why the studies came out working on people with Alzheimer's. So. Yeah. At the beginning when the creatine comes out, I remember I had a lot of hater. Oh, don't take it. You lost your hair. You I lost heard your before. kidney. Hair, kidney, yeah, always, always, always something. I heard all these. So I right always. now, all the doctor approaching the people take the creatine. Yeah, I mean, creatine has been led to, I mean, there's a lot of studies that say that it definitely helps with brain health. Um, it helps regenerate energy cells in your brain. All those things that have been proven, you know, and I and I, there's a lot of cognitive benefits, and we're getting a lot of questions from people that are not lifters on a daily, weekly basis, asking, "Hey, what creatine should I take?" And obviously, this is a good question, right? Like, you know, what are the yeah, benefits but to you? Remember, you know, just because it does help doesn't mean you have to OD because that's the next thing that people start doing. Oh my God, it helps yeah. brain functions, it helps, right. you know, cognitive issues and all that. So it's one of these things where. You don't want to OD, take a certain amount because you still have, you know, more is not always better. And it could also lead to another issue. So the kidney issues where they started saying in the beginning, yes. it could be an issue because you're doing too still, much. Yes, yes. You know, I mean, kidney stones or whatever, you know, but you don't want to take Creatine more. can cause kidney stones? I mean, they said they that it's yeah. not proven. Yeah, I mean, it obviously, if it did, it's because mm -hmm. they OD'd and it took if too much. If you take the creatine and then you're not yeah. drinking enough water, Yes. We spoke not, about not, that. I think Arnold Schwarzenegger was talking about that, right? Yeah. Like it could it's be. It's not just a yeah. curtain. Any any supplement, if you take it and then you not take yeah. enough water, it says that that's why the all bodybuilder holding the a gallon Big of water. Big jug. Yep. Yeah, that's it's very 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 important to fill up the body with the curtain with the water. Sorry. But did you used yeah. to walk around around the gym with a big jug? You know those those huge jugs. I actually did that once, and I annoy myself that I never <laughs> did it again. I did it a long time ago. And I like cold water. Right, right, right. And the worst thing that happens when you carry the gallon, first of all, is in a plastic container. Mm -hmm. It starts tasting like plastic. And second, when it gets warm, I hate that. Yeah. And then you start drinking warm water, I start gagging. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I stopped doing it way before I was a pro. And I much rather refill my water in a one liter bottle and, and just keep it cold, keep it cool. And uh, that's just enough. I can never do the gallon. <laughs> ever again and, and i mean you'll see my friends and coach they'll s never see me with a gallon or i mean it's a lot of things that bodybuilders tend to do and it's either the, the gallon stereotype water, right got the big jug of <laughs> yeah jug of water or the big suitcase luggage briefcase yeah i don't know suitcase <laughs> they take to the gym or, 
I can't do that. Bigger, better. No, I, I can't do that, man. I travel light. As long as I have my belt, my wrist wrap, you know, knee wraps, that was good enough. As long as I carry two meals, I don't need my six meals because I'm not going to be out. Yeah, why would you want to have six meals with you at all times? It's a lot, right? <laughs> no. I mean, it's going to go bad, no? You, aren't, you don't want to lose that muscle mass, that's why. Yeah, the, muscle. the food's going to go bad, though, no? Yes. Throughout the whole day? Well, you start smelling, especially when you do uh, fish. No. I would never do the fish outside. How can uh, you torture uh, people with hot fish? Or here, can you heat this up? Heat oh, up the fish. Oh, and egg stick. whites inside your bag the whole day? <laughs> oh, my God. Always ate the fish at home. Always ate the egg whites at home. <laughs> Only thing I ever carried was chicken. So, there you go. And again, for two meals, because uh, I could be out for six hours and have two meals. How about, how about in the airplane? Have you opened the chicken with broccoli in the airplane? Oh, my God. The broccoli, yes. Yeah, I had life. experience with the one bodybuilder. He opened the jar with the in chicken. In front of you? In in airplane, in, in we are in the air. He opened it and then, oh my God! I go I go under seat. No <laughs> one see me. No, it's bad. It's and with, bad. And with the air pressure, yes, entire, it sticks more and it smells more and it's entire airplane <laughs> <laughs> smells <laughs> broccoli. <laughs> Broccoli and chicken. What did he fry the broccoli before the plane? <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> no, I mean, you guys could do it. You got to eat the fish. You got to eat the broccoli in the plane. I suggest, you know what? Eat it in the bathroom. And just <laughs> yeah, to eat it in the bathroom. <laughs> At least. And flush because the air comes out faster. And just flush and it keeps sucking that smelly ass air out. That's a good, that's a good idea. That's, that's the best you can do, you know? <laughs> I used to do it back in the days with a little bleep. <laughs> <laughs> You know, puff, blow, flush. <laughs> <laughs> puff, blow, uh, flush. <laughs> wow. It works. It works. <laughs> All right. Have you never met anybody that's gotten sick off of creatine, Vic? Or that's gotten uh, uh, bad gotten effects? Sick. I, I heard of some cases. Well, it was creatine mixed with glutamine. So I was think it was the glutamine that caused it, which was diarrhea. So do not mix glutamine yeah. no, with creatine. No, you could, creatine. again, it, it was that OD thing where he's, he just thought it was going to get more out of it. When you so do you, do you, yeah, can you mix creatine and pre-workout? It's a question we get a lot as well. Yes, like, yes, yes definitely. Yeah, you can. Mostly, mostly pre-workout has a creatine. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying like in, addi in addition to the compounds already in the pre-workouts, which has, sometimes has yeah, creatine, can you yeah. put more creatine yeah, in? you can. It's not like going <laughs> to increase the heart rate more than what the pre-workout already right. does. Okay. If you if you if you take uh, if you take overdose creatine, your kidney get hurts. And just so many work. people don't understand this kidney; they thought it's lower back pain. But I mean, it's very very uh, yeah. common when you're taking the creatine, your lower back get pain. And the people that thought is a lower back, it's not lower back; it's a kidney. Well, that's that's if you're ODing yeah. on that stuff, right? Yeah. Yes. And and it speaks to you, the pain. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Right. And I have to I have to add this: we have we have thousand different type of the creatine, as a quality wise. It's very very important to find a good quality America way because China has a creatine creatine monohydrate, and it's exactly like a creatine is a creatine. But the quality is not like America, boy. All right, so Michelle, Michelle Cook Hill is this week's winner. And the question was, what is creatine done for your cognitive ability? It said, make, make you sharper, right, basically? Yes, make you sharper. I know you might give it to your grandma. So if you do, just help her out with a little pump in the gym. Yeah, you know? it works. Yeah. All right, so Michelle Cook is this week's Dial Moods winner. Please send Dial. us your address. We'll send you, we'll send you a package. And uh, we have a second question of the day, right? Yeah, so the second question, so it's question number two. You get your uh, choice of Dial Mood products. Shout out to Terrence Slater, 9480. You're this week's winner as well. And the question is, why didn't you protest, Vic, your loss to Jay Cutler? Even Jay knew he lost. This is mean, back to all seven. You keep going back. You keep pulling me back to that. Well, I think that wasn't the right approach just wasn't the right approach. For one, I, I think one of the things I used to read and most of you guys watching, you know, was flex, you know, muscle mag, you know, muscle or muscular development, all the magazines where Sean Ray will lose a contest and he will just protest and argue and fight. In and, the news, in the magazine? And yes. bitch and moan. Yeah, you know, that's what Everywhere. I would read. Yeah, all the time it was always Sean Ray. Uh, you know, I mean, the other athletes, I'm sure, had some sort of grievance and uh, something right. problem. But And he was protesting against the, the people who beat him. Like who? 
Yes. So always, always, always. Dorian so. Yates. All those people. Dorian Yates. Yeah, you name it. Every time you got second. I mean, Dorian Yates look by far way better than Sean Ray. Well, you know, you stage. can count on yes. Sean Ray, you know. Sean Ray, I mean, <laughs> looked good. Honest. He was more the ideal physique. Sean Ray was just, I mean, uh, uh, Dorian Yates was just huge and shredded, not the ideal physique everybody wanted to have, you know? So it was one of those well, things that's what the judges where, wanted, so. Yeah, that's what the judges wanted. So, and, you know, to answer your question, you know, I think I always had respect for Jay, um, the judging panel that year, not so much, <laughs> you know, but um, he just took what they gave him, that's it, you know? So for me to start bitching and moaning was not gonna change the judge's decision. Sometimes when you watch a sporting event, right? Like sometimes they dispute a play in tennis, right? So they, sh they see instant replay and they see like the ball is it out of out of bounds, whatever, right? But here, what are you who are you going to complain to even? Body Nobody. Right? So it's a, it's a Nobody. panel of judges. They make a collective decision, right? So what? I mean, you could try and make yourself feel a little bit better, you know, speak to the judges. After this show, you could have won, but didn't win. And make yourself feel a little bit better, but at the end of the day, it's just another it set is of bullshit they're it's selling done. you. <laughs> so, yeah. Ask the judge, ask the judge. You ain't gonna get no truth, you know? Just walk away, sharpen yourself up, look at your own pictures, and just hopefully try to come back undeniably good next time. And from the fans' perspective, I, I hear fans, like they, they can come to a judge and show them pictures, like a side-by-side -side comparison. And what do you hear back usually is, you have to be there in person, to make that judgment call, right? It's no, always going to be the same answer. Exactly. So no. ultimately, there's no method to to dispute anything. It's just just walk away, no. go have your pizza, have your burger, <laughs> and good luck next time. Right, right, right. <laughs> oh, well, that's this week's uh, answer to Terrence Slater ninety four eighty. You get your choice of Dow Moods. Dialed your mood up with Dial Moods. They're a great, great product, great supplement, great, great energy with no crashes, no. Jitters, highly recommend here at Generation. Great Night. test. Guys, guys, more questions for Victor. He's going to answer the oh. best questions. Yes, yes, more questions. I thought you had another one. What's going on, man? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. No, guys, please send more questions for Victor. Yes, keep them coming, guys. Come if you, on. Make sure Victor uh, send you the package of Dial Moves. Yeah, and keep them bold. At the end of the day, that's what we hear for you guys, you know. No question is too crazy to answer. So yeah, th th this month's biggest, I guess, surprise to everybody was uh, Chris Bumstead after winning six Olympia Classic Physique and publicly retiring. Suddenly he announced that he's going to be doing a men's open show in Prague, which he's been teasing that I think for a while, right? He's been talking like he wants to, before he retires completely, he wants to do a men's open show, yep. but nobody expected him just to come off an Olympia win and then jump into another division. Well, after retiring. So soon, right? Yeah. So. He did the uh, Hulk Hogan, you know. How many times did Hulk Hogan retired? He kept coming back. <laughs> <laughs> he did it. Well, that was right. quick. That was in less than a so, week, though. Yeah, so Chris obviously retires, and he says he's not going to compete anymore. Obviously, he does that men open. Prague is about four weeks from Olympia. So you can say, right, in your opinion, Vic, does that give him enough time to bulk up, give him get more mass on? What do you think? I like to see this because, you know, he has a great physique. You know, he dominated his, you know, you know competition. I think Sean, uh, um, Sean Clarita is doing it too. Mm -hmm. So Sean Clarita is competing and so is uh, Matt Martin Fitzgerald also competing at the Prague show. Fitzwater. So we'll be, yeah. Fitzwater, yeah. Fitz, Fitzwater will be competing as well. So, you know, obviously that's going to be a very interesting event. Showcase, you know. big event for the Prague show. What are your thoughts on Vic? No, it's great. I mean, you have Sean Clarita. He matched, you know, dominated his, you know, 212. You have, obviously, Chris Bumstead, who's, you know, was unbeatable. Uh, two great guys, you know, going into the open category when, you know, the main, you know, criticism is not enough mass. So I'm going to see if they're going to use the card on Chris Bumstead or he's going to win on Chris Bumstead the name. You know, or is it going to be judged as due process, like the open classes, first mass, then condition, you know? Martin Fitzwater, it, just so we remember, he got fourth place this year's Olympia. Yeah, Fitzwater, you know, he, he was 
fourth, you know, I had Akeem up in fourth, you know, but to see him up there, he has a great physique. You don't think if the judge wants to look at first as a mass and then conditioning, Martin couldn't be fourth, I mean, yeah, you know, but again, it's you know, after I think second place, it was a toss up placement. The second and third, it's not matching with the second, third, and fourth, it's not matching. Well, you with think Hardy won in the first place, so I mean, that's that's a different story. <laughs> yeah. that's, a, that's a different story. My point is, the judge is not looking the mass anymore. Yeah. Look, look, well, Michael Hearn actually two, said two, two, one, two for last two years was was beating all giants in the stage. Well, one Hardy and one... Well, Samson is pretty... Samson's big. No, no, no. Samson just, just won this saying, year. Yeah. Just, just won this right, year. Right, right, yeah. Last year, a one two one two champion won, won Mr. Olympia Open. Right. And a year before, a Hardy won. So, Smaller. to me, a judge doesn't look the mass anymore. Right. They look at more the conditioning. So, you're saying Chris Buckley has a chance to... He has a chance to win. I, I, think, I think he has a chance to win, specifically because he don't have to be go down to be squeeze himself okay so you're saying the rules change all of a sudden i, I mean they <laughs> change but they so they us. just changed because chris bumstead has decided to go here and they they want him they need him to kind of bring the in the question sales. is this is the last time we saw chris bumstead on the stage mm -hmm. or this is the beginning of chris bumstead on the open i think this is a good question I mean, we'll see. Maybe Chris Bumstead say goodbye on Classic, but this is the beginning for Chris Bumstead. I don't open. think so. I mean, maybe, but... Uh, maybe. Or they paid him to show up, and he got paid anyway. So the we're not losing. Out, so they, now that he announced he's doing it. The, sold, the show is sold out. The Prague... Uh, I mean, I, will, I, will stay there. I want to I wanna see this show. I want to see... It. Michael Hearn said two days ago, he said that he hopes that Chris wins because that's going to give a new direction for Men's Open, which is... The classic look, because Mike right. likes that type of look. Oh, which is don't get super big anymore. All right. You know, and hopefully save some lives. I don't know. Is that going to be the way? Or again, I mean, did they change the rules all of a sudden? I think they should put up the uh, judging criteria again and see if it's going to meet those criteria for open. Anyone knows that Chris Baum said weight on the stage? 230? 230. So 230 is 230 good for open. No, 230 is good enough because remember, stage, yeah, yeah. Flex Wheeler was competing at that same, you know, way, if not even lighter. So I think, you know, Chris Bumps is going to do, as I posted on, on social media, he's going to do the Frank Zane. He's going to crush a lot of these guys based on his balanced physique. So that's what's going to happen. So the guys that are competing with him, you know, I suggest you guys – turn the game around and just start focusing on holding your mm. gut in and not focus on that size. And it might save you to get a good placing in the prog, you know? Mm. You got to secure that placing. Yeah. So, so do you think uh, Chris will beat Sean Let's, let's start with Sean Clarita. Do you think he'll defeat Sean Clarita? On height, the way mm. we've seen in the past, and Arnold and all these guys being, right. you know, beating the shorter guys, probably. And... Uh, you know, because Chris is not going to miss his peak. He's going to get his peak. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want to see Chris next to the Martin, actually. That's what I was going to ask you next. Yeah. What do you think between him and Martin? Chris, I mean, two different type of body. Yeah, way different. One I mean, mile, if yeah. Martin comes in with Chris's, you know, condition, he can. Yes. He could if beat Martin him. comes with Chris, exactly. Yes, he could be. If him. Martin comes with Chris condition, bigger, right? yo, condition. because now you're gonna see the real mass mm -hmm. in shape and condition. Yeah. So yes, and then it's gonna show a lot of Chris Bumstead's flaws, you know. And he's younger than Chris Bumstead. Yeah, I mean, he's younger. He's got better arms. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, I mean, as far as the lat spread, that's where... So, if Chris Bumstead win in the Prague, can we say Chris Bumstead can be fourth place in Mr. Olympia at least? That's a great question, right? At yeah. least. We'll that's see. a very good question. We'll see. Because he beat number four in the world. Right. Yeah, that makes sense, logically speaking, right? Yes. And he can be number one in 212 <laughs> division. I'm 212. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if Chris Bonson wins, arguably, I mean, our Olympia is not going to agree to that, obviously, but you, he can say, hey, I'm the best in the world. Period, in every division. <laughs> I mean, you, kind of. you can almost, but again, he's not beating, you know, Samson. So it's not yeah. Samson. So. You don't think he's beating Samson on, on, at the Prague show? 
Is Sancho doing Prague? No, if no, he no. was to. If he was to. Oh, I mean, if he was doing Prague and he beat him, he can't say that, yes. Right. Yes, I mean, Gunther did that with Ronnie Coleman yes. at the GNC, so. That I was mean, crazy, right? But that yeah. was last of Gunther's win. Right. You know. Imagine if Chris wins Prague and then he goes into men's open in the Arnold Classic. That'd be interesting. So he unretires, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, I think is I think it's a one-off. I think he just wants to do it, like you know. Yeah, if he do it, he, he's gonna place great. You know, he's gonna. He already sold out the crowd. It's no, he's rebounding after Mr. Olympia. He had. He don't have to be waved. He's yeah. just slow, slow, slow going up. Doesn't yeah, have but to remember be... his physique looks great condition. So if he puts on the exercise and it doesn't really show the detail. That's it's gonna take away from his actual physique. What did he need to he become? Mr. Olympia Open champion, number one in the world, or beat Samson. Size, right? The size. It has to be size. The size because that's what Olympia so was he's founded on. Right? He has to be yeah. 260, 270. He's got to fill out the frame. 280 you know? maybe, right? He will need his legs bigger, you know, arms bigger. Because he's so much taller than everybody else. Yeah. Yeah, he's tall than Samson? Height, I don't think so. Samson is tall too. No, they're about mm. close to the same height. Yeah, Andrew I would Jackson, say so. Andrew I would Jack say they're the same height. And six, I think Andrew they're, Jack is 6'6. Yeah. Six, six. Andrew six, Jack is six. tall. Yeah, Andrew no. Jack is tall. Yeah. Andrew Jack is tall. He, he was over in 300 on the stage. No, he's, I mean, he's tall. But... I don't know about 300. I don't think he would have <laughs> bought in that condition if he was over 300. No way. Th that's what they say. No. Nah. So what is your season there, 400? Show, yeah. Yeah, nah. <laughs> he wasn't 300? Nah, I don't think so. Yeah? Yeah, I don't think so. At 300 with that condition, no way. Really? No. Nah. Come on, Ronnie Coleman bring 300 with he was, right? and he was, was soft as hell. <laughs> I seen year? him at 300. <laughs> what year was it? Was it? soft, very Two, soft. 2001, 2005. 2005. Yeah, off season. And then he lost. Yeah, off season. And then he lost. 300. Yeah, but that's and yeah. Then he 300 lost. condition, no way. I never yet to see that yet. What's the heaviest person you've see seen that. in the best condition possible? And the uh, heaviest? I mean, Ronnie. Ronnie was. Ronnie. was him? Yeah, Ronnie. Yo. In the, the social media, the people start to compare Samson and Ronnie Coleman. Do you think this is a comparison? I Not compared him actually last time. He compared him to no, because uh, Ronnie's condition was by far still the best. Still hasn't been caught up to, and you still haven't seen anybody yet with that condition. So it's comparing, you know, what's winning now to was to this day still dominating social media. You know, once they put Ronnie next to anyone, it's like. Come on, man. It's like a white bothered dude. Speaking don't, of don't. Samson, we just had a shoot with him in, in UK, actually, for Olympia documentary. And uh, just, just, I'm always like amazed with the dynamic of him and his wife together, coach yeah. and uh, a coach and uh, athlete. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's incredible. I think people are gonna love to see that in the documentary. Uh, anyway, so speaking of uh, Olympia prep, Martin Fitzwater. Yeah, he revealed that he doesn't yeah. do any cardio before the 2024 Olympia. I mean, it showed a little bit he didn't, you know. Oh, I so mean, you're saying it's a, it's a negative thing? No, I mean, can people do it? Yes, of course. You know, uh, not, doesn't necessarily is written in stone that you have to do cardio to look great. I mean, Dexter did it for many years. Does it mean your diet is 100% on point? I just think it might give you a 10, 15% better look if you did do the cardio. So he would have been number two. You know, no, he probably would have looked a little bit more sharper. You know, that's it. A little bit more sharper, and that could have been the big difference from fourth to a higher place. But it's crazy because so. when I talk a lot about it, they say they do cardio twice a day in prep. Some, yeah. You know, I mean, many. it depends off the depends off the genetics of that athlete and right. what type of the gear and how much you're using it. Gear. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the juice specifically when it goes to the prep. Mm. And I mean the dosage. It's very, very important to how much you work out and how much you do in cardio. Right. It's very. I mean they involve. You can't. You cannot say. They I are think separate. Dorian didn't do that much cardio, so it varies from person to person. But also you can't yeah. say, oh, Dorian didn't do it, Dexter didn't do it. But that's why I'm saying. If but you, they look. You can see the condition. Victor, you know, if you work out two times a day mm. hard, you don't need cardio anymore. No, especially we're eating, you know, good eating, efficiently. Good have you ever eating, done a cardio prep? Prep, you know? Um, have you always done I used cardio? to do a lot, but when I realized I did too much, I noticed that I can cut back mm. and I didn't really need 
an hour, then I, I didn't really need 45 minutes. Eventually I was doing 30, you know, minutes it's because crazy. that was enough. So it tends to be a problem with a lot of people over cardio, You're doing, you know, mm -hmm. doing too much. Kevin Lebroni told me he did like an hour, an hour every day in prep. Kevin Lebroni. I mean, makes sense. You know, probably makes you know, sense. Probably, but then remember also, it was the first body part he started losing was his legs. Legs, yeah. Oh, so, so too much cardio. So. Yeah, yeah. It's just one of those things. Dixon where Jackson never do cardio. He started doing it in the end. At the end, yeah. Yeah. Are we? You mean 50 years old? <laughs> no, no. I mean, towards the end, when he was working with George Farah and a few guys, you know, Dexter started doing probably like 20 minutes or something. Just the bike? Yeah, Dexter didn't do much cardio. Vic, Vic, what do you think about rowing machines? There's a rowing machine right there. Uh, do you think that's that can replace just walking cardio of a rowing machine? It's, it's, it's cardio. It's cardio. It's yeah. cardio. It doesn't matter if you walk. your heart rate. A rowing machine is harder than walking and a step because at the same time, you're pushing with your legs and pulling with your hand. It's just one and only cardio machine. You're doing push and pull at the same time. That's why it's harder than all of them. And so, so many people can do that. How would you recommend doing it? How many intervals and how many minutes or whatever? How, how do you typically do it? Depends on you. I mean, yeah. I, have a, I have a client, they cannot do more than five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes consistently? Yes. Or you do like 10 no, 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 seconds five and five minutes. Five minutes consistently. I mean, it's when hard, I did, it's hard. it's hard. Yeah, the rowing, I used to do rowing for about five minutes. I did the bike for about 10 minutes. Mm. And I would finish with either the stairs That's or just, you know, treadmill. On cardio day. Yeah, cardio yeah. day. Stairmaster is the hardest, right? It is the hardest, but again, it's, it's uh, the best. Stairs it's the best. best. I you love it. You can do 20 yeah. minutes on the stairs or 40 minutes on the treadmill. Yes. 20 minutes of the stairs. I did an hour on yeah. the stairs the other day. Wow. wow. Yeah, that's, you know, that's something else, man. You were yeah. planning for a date or something? I'm <laughs> <laughs> getting ready for a date. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I, did. I had 60 minutes on it. I used, well, to be, I used to be using the cardio for walk or run, and I have problems for legs all the time. Yeah. And then uh, I talked to someone and said, why, why are you walking? Why yeah. are you running? Do step or bike. Yeah. So... As soon as I step the steps, oh my God! Yeah, way better. Everything is changed. I think hit it's on actually steps good is for the best. legs. Yes, hit on steps is great. Yes. Yeah. Do you remember right. we talking to Akim? Akim was favorite uh, favorite cardio is the steps, and he said, as soon as I start to steps, my conditioning legs has started to my The craziest thing I remember from that interview is that he ate McDonald's for the whole year with uh, Juan Morel. Yeah, I did a McDonald's challenge for one Mac full year. I I McDonald's every day. <laughs> it's cool, man, but all that bad food. Remember, it just uh, I think it affects the skin, man. Recently, 100%. recently, Akim he become dangerous. We saw it doesn't him. affect your skin. You're right. Yeah, yeah, I think it gives you that like such not good skin because of the, such a high processed food i mean i mean we're gonna talk about processed food i mean mcdonald's is probably in the top number one top one for like the last 50 years you know Vic, so last thing I <laughs> last thing let's talk about today is this video that's circulating um i've shown we, we, we all saw it right the, the video of a guy uh you know how they slap each other's bags before they look by the way i don't know why they do that but this guy throws a, a weight at this guy's back and then he goes ahead and lifts. What, what did you think about that? It, it was just kind of stupid. <laughs> I mean, it, it's one thing, it wasn't even power lifting. It was just a normal day, a Tuesday at a gym. And then he gets under under the squat bar. He starts back. squatting in the worst form ever. <laughs> you know, I was waiting for him to buckle and, and cut short. He probably did buckle too, you know. Does that actually help when somebody slap, slaps your back like that? Um, I mean, I seen it. Usually in powerlifting, the slapping, the yeah. and I'm like the it, slapping point for for powerlifter is basic up. wake it up, yeah. So yeah, we want to shake you. Have you let a, have you ever let a man slap your back? <laughs> no. Um, maybe I mean you, you get a, a slap here, which is more like a, a, a you know exaggerated pat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did powerlifting for a little while, and uh, other than the ammonia uh, stick, yeah. I mean that's. What about that, that that salt, the smelling Aminia. salt? Aminia. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah. Yes. I never, I never, you it smell wakes you up. Yeah, if you smell, you you wake up. <laughs> really? Yeah. 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 They burn everything, you know? I mean, there's a lot they of things burn. I could smell rather than that that'll wake me up. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> and it doesn't come in a stick, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the slab is not necessary. If you ask me, it's not necessary. It doesn't work yeah. at all. It's just it's usually mean, for the hype. Just the hype, ah, like the screaming, you know, yeah. back in the days, you know, before you go charging on war. Ah, you want to scream just to get the adrenaline going. So the slapping is just to wake up the adrenaline. If you're still kind of dragging a little, just kind of, yeah. you know, casual. So it could help. I mean, some guys don't need it, but um, definitely to get hyped up and get the adrenaline going, the blood flowing. That's why they do it, and it does work for a lot of people. So very few don't need it, and this guy didn't need it to do, you know, whatever, 200 pounds. That's all he did. He could have. I thought he could have injured his back, like the weight thrown on like that. That was crazy. I mean, if we would have hit him one more time, yes, he would. <laughs> <laughs> I think the pain of the plate was more than the actual pain he had from squatting. Yeah. They do everything for view, man, for like and everything. Yeah. It's probably the only time he did it, actually, too. Yeah, so it was for yeah. social media, for yeah. sure, man. I'm sure he turned around. Don't do this again, man. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for joining us in this week's podcast. Remember to follow us, like, and stream our prior podcast. Go to iHeartRadio or anywhere. IHeart. <laughs> yeah, IHeart. Yeah, yeah. IHeart. Yeah. IHeart. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Apple Podcast or wherever you stream your podcast. Until next time, guys. Hey, yo, listen up, man. Milk is for babies. Beef built muscle. You hear me? Yeah, I said it. Beef built muscle. California, baby. RTDs, baby. On the go. Let's get it. Milk is for babies. Beef it up with carnivore RTDs. 40 grams of protein, zero fat, zero sugar, zero lactose. Get yours today.